Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here today on Yahweh's Sabbath day to fellowship with Yahweh and to fellowship with one another, to study His Word. We are so thankful that we have been brought into the understanding of Yahweh's Sabbath day. And we're thankful to have a, a DVD program. And we pray that you would receive a blessing from the messages that, that come from that program. Also, those on the internet that are now receiving videos through the internet. Uh, today's message is a continuation of Kings and Priests for a Thousand Years. And during the last message we discussed how the understanding of revelations can be found in the symbology of the Old Testament. In Revelations it speaks of plagues being poured out before the deliverance from this earth. The two witnesses uh, coming during the times of the tribulation and how um, the symbology found in the Old Testament, the uh, Egypt being a symbol of the slavery of mankind enslaved to this earth and the bondage of sin, the plagues in Egypt directly correlating to the plagues in Revelations right before our coming king, the mark of the blood on the doorpost uh, symbolizing the seal before the wrath and devastation is poured out on this earth. Moses and Aaron being two witnesses during the time of the plagues. The mixed multitude coming out of Egypt with Israel. Uh, going through the Red Sea, a symbol of baptism. Where were these people headed? They were headed to the land. Scripture has a focus on the land, which is where I want to get to today. If there was a promise for mankind to dwell in heaven, it would have been revealed to us in the Tanakh. From Genesis to Malachi, there would be some evidence somewhere. Why? Because Yahweh does nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And there is nothing in the New Testament that is in contradiction with the Old. It is a commentary on the Old. There is no contradiction. So, if there's anything in the Messianic Scriptures that seems to contradict something in the old, we are missing something in the middle. And I would like to discuss today that those people going into the land was prophetic of what is going to happen when the Messiah returns. He is going to take us to the land. And I believe we can prove that in Scripture. We discussed uh, in the last message that there will be some caught up in the clouds to meet the master in the air. And we also discussed that his angels would gather his elect from the, from the heavens. Now, if we were to meet, meet the master by land, that would be a long walk. And I believe that the reason we're caught up into the clouds to meet him into the heavens is that's the fastest way to get us to the land. By air. Um, I want to start off in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we had already talked about uh, many details in the last message. Uh, about what's going to happen at his return. And I want to go a little deeper with that today. 
And at his return, he's going to be fulfilling Old Testament prophecies. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. As to the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to him. What is he going to do at his return? He is going to gather us. That word gather is very, very important. If you take that word gather and go to a strong concordance and look in the Old Testament, it is going to reveal to you what that gathering is. And we're going to go there. Um, also, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have guarded the faith. For the rest, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Master, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all those who love his appearing. He will appear and he will put a crown upon those who love his appearing. But there will be a group who do not love his appearing. And that's when all the nations shall mourn. That's when they will run and hide in the rocks from the wrath of the Lamb. But what's going to happen at his return? Let's flip back to Deuteronomy. Well, I'll take that back. First, let me go to Exodus chapter 33 to get a context of why this shall take place. Exodus chapter 33, starting in verse 1. And Yahweh said to Moses, Come, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, To your seed I give it. To the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh swore that they would inherit the land. And... Galatians chapter 3 tells us a little more about this seed. 3 verse 26. For you are all sons of Elohim through belief in Messiah Yeshua. For as many of you as were immersed into Messiah have put on Messiah. There is not Yehudite, Jew nor Greek. There is not slave nor free. There is not male and female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua, and if you are of Messiah, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. A promise was made to inherit the land, and we still seek that today. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Starting in verse 1. And it shall be, when all these words come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the Gentiles where Yahweh your Elohim drives you, and shall turn back to Yahweh your Elohim and obey His voice according to to all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your being, you and your children, then Yahweh your Elohim shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you. And he shall turn back and gather, there's that word, and gather you from all the peoples where Yahweh your Elohim has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the furthest parts under heaven, Where's he drawing us from? From heaven? Those that meet him in the clouds? 
If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under the heavens, from there Yahweh your Elohim does gather you, and from there he does take you, and Yahweh your Elohim shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he shall do good to you, and increase you more than your fathers, and Yahweh your Elohim shall circumcise your heart, and the heart of your seed to love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being so that you might live and Yahweh your Elohim shall put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you and persecute you and you shall turn back and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments which I command you today and Yahweh your Elohim shall make you have excess in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of the body and in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of the ground for good for Yahweh turned back to rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers if you obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to guard his commands and his laws which are written in the book of the Torah if you turn back to Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being now this is interesting the next verse for this command which I am commanding you today, it is not too hard. Uh, it is not too hard for you, nor is it far off. You know, there are those that claim that the law was too hard. It was too difficult. Well, why did he say it wasn't? That's why in 1 John he says, His commands are not grievous. His law is not a burden. If there is any law in the Torah that cannot be kept, then that verse was a lie. Isaiah chapter 56. Starting in verse 1. Thus said Yahweh, Guard right ruling and do righteousness. For near is my deliverance to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, guarding the Sabbath lest he profane it and guarding his hand from doing any evil. And let not the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh speak saying, Yahweh has certainly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, look, I am a dry tree. For thus said Yahweh to the eunuchs who guard my Sabbaths and have chosen what pleases me and hold fast to, to my covenant. To them I shall give in my house <coughs> and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and daughters. I give them an everlasting name that is not cut off. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh to be his servants all who guard the Sabbath and not profane it and hold fast to my covenant. Them I shall bring to my set apart mountain where is he bringing them? To his set apart mountain and let them rejoice in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and the slaughterings are accepted on my altar. For my house is called a house of prayer for all peoples. The master Yahweh who gathers the outcast of Israel declares I gather still others to him besides those who are gathered to him. Jeremiah chapter 23. The main focus of this message is the gathering. At the Messiah's return, he will gather. Jeremiah 23 verse 1. Woe to the shepherds, destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture. 
declares Yahweh. Therefore thus said Yahweh Elohim of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not tended them. See, I am punishing you for the evil of your deeds, declares Yahweh. Therefore I shall gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them and shall bring them back to their fold and they shall bear an increase and I shall raise up shepherds over them and they shall feed them what are they going to feed them with? And they shall fear no more, nor be discouraged, nor shall they be lacking, declares Yahweh. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I shall raise for David a branch of righteousness, and a sovereign shall reign and act wisely, and shall do right ruling and righteousness in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel dwell safely. Now, I want to put a little side note on Judah being saved and Israel dwelling safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. Therefore see the days are coming declares Yahweh when they shall no more say as Yahweh lives who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But as Yahweh lives who brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and from all the lands where I have driven them and they shall dwell on their own soil. So a time will come when he will not be remembered for bringing them out of Egypt but he will be remembered for bringing his people into the land that they were promised. Um, continuing on my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake I am like a drunken man and like a man overcome by wine because of Yahweh and because of his set apart words for the land is filled with adulteries for the land mourns because of a curse the pastures of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their might is is not right for both prophet and priest have become defiled even in my house I have found their evil declares Yahweh therefore their way is to them like slippery ways in the dark they are driven on and they shall fall in them for I bring evil on them the year of their punishment declares Yahweh and I have seen folly in the prophets of Shomeron they prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem I have seen a horrible matter, committing adultery and walking in falsehood. And they strengthen the hands of the evil ones so that no one turns back from his evil. All of them are like Sodom to me and their inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore thus said Yahweh of hosts concerning the prophets, See, I am making them eat wormwood, and shall make them drink poison water, for defilement has gone out into all the land from the prophets of Jerusalem. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They lead you astray. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of Yahweh. They keep on saying to those who despise me, Yahweh has said you shall have peace. And to all who walk according to the stubbornness of their own hearts, they say no evil comes upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of Yahweh and has seen and heard his word? Who has listened to his word and obeyed it? See, a storm of Yahweh shall go forth in a rage, a whirling storm, it whirls on the head of the wrong. The displeasure of Yahweh shall not turn back until he has done and established the purposes of his heart. In the latter days, you shall understand it perfectly. I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have let my people hear my words, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. 
Am I an Elohim close by, declares Yahweh, and not an Elohim afar off? If anyone is hidden in secret places, would I not see him, declares Yahweh? Do I not fill the heavens and earth, declares Yahweh? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsehood in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Till when shall it be in the heart of the prophets, the prophets of falsehood and the prophets of deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name? by their dreams which everyone relates to his neighbor and their fathers forgot my name for Baal the prophet who has a dream let him relate the dream and he who has my word let him speak my word in truth what is the chaff to the wheat declares Yahweh is not my word like fire declares Yahweh and like a hammer that shatters a rock Therefore, see, I am against the prophets, declaring Yahweh, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. How are the prophets of today stealing the words of Yahweh by false interpretation of it? There's more churches out there than gas stations, just about. Amen. And what are they doing? They're making merchandise of the faith. Million dollar buildings. Hundred thousand dollar stained glass windows. And they don't even understand the scripture. They're, they have lost their identity. Um, excuse me. Flip over to Jeremiah chapter 30. Starting in verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh saying, Thus spoke Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For look, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I shall turn back the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, declares Yahweh, and I shall bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers and let them possess it. And these are the words Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For this is what Yahweh said. We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see if a man is giving birth. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor, and all faces turn pale? Oh, for great is that day. There is none like it, and it is the time of Jacob's distress. But he shall be saved out of it. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, that I break his yoke from your neck and tear off your bonds, and foreigners no more enslave them. And they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their sovereign, whom I raise up for them. And you do not fear, O Jacob my servant, declares Yahweh, nor be discouraged, O Israel, for look, I am saving you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity and Jacob shall return and have rest I put a little side note on dwelling in safety Israel shall dwell in safety and right here it says Jacob shall return and have rest and be at ease with no one to trouble him for I am with you, declares Yahweh, to save you. Though I make a complete end of all Gentiles where I have scattered you, yet I do not make a complete end of you. But I shall rep reprove you in judgment and by no means leave you unpunished. Uh, 31. Verse 31. Uh... I'm sorry, let me start with verse 1, chapter 31. At that time, declares Yahweh, I shall be the Elohim of all the clans of Israel. 
and they shall be my people. Thus said Yahweh, a people escaped from the sword found favor in the wilderness. Israel went in when it went to find rest. Yahweh appeared to me from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore I shall draw you with kindness. I am going to build you again, and you shall be re rebuilt, O maiden of Israel, or O virgin of Israel. And you remember in Revelations when it says they are virgins? I think there might be a tie in there. Um... Again, you shall take up your tambourines and go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. Again, you shall plant vines on the mountains of Shomeron. The plants shall plant and treat them as common. For there shall be a day when the watchmen cry on Mount Ephraim, Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to Yahweh our Elohim. For thus said Yahweh, Sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Cry out, give praise and say, O Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am bringing them from the land of the north and shall gather them from the ends of the earth, among them the, blank, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great assembly shall return here with weeping. They shall come, and with their prayers I bring them. I shall make them walk by rivers of waters in a straight way in which they do not stumble. For I shall be a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O Gentiles, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel gathers him and shall guard him as a shepherd his flock. What did the Messiah say about the shepherd and the flock? John chapter 10. Actually, I hope Pause one second. Let me finish out here. Uh, verse 31. Chapter 31, verse 31. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, declares Yahweh. For this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel after those, day, those days, declares Yahweh. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts and write it on their hearts and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people and no longer shall they teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying no Yahweh for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares Yahweh for I shall forgive their crookedness and remember their sins no more how is it possible that they don't have to teach anymore it says because every single one of them knows him this cannot reach fruition until the completement of all things um, Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 37 see I am gathering them out of all the lands where I have driven them in my displeasure and in my wrath and in great rage. I shall bring them back to this place and shall let them dwell in safety. And they shall be my people and I shall be their Elohim and I shall give them one heart and one way to fear me all the days for the good of them and of their children after them. And I shall make an everlasting covenant with them that I do not turn back from doing good to them, and I shall put my fear in their hearts so as not to turn aside from me. And I shall rejoice over them to do good to them and shall plant them in this land in truth with all my heart and with all my being. For thus said Yahweh, as I have brought all this great evil on this people, so am I bringing on them all the good 
that I am speaking to them. Ezekiel chapter 34. Starting in verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus said the master Yahweh to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been feeding themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? And I had asked the question earlier, what are they being fed? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahweh. Verse 3, you eat the fat and you put on the wool. You slaughter the fatlings you do not need. You do not feed the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, nor have you healed the sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back the straying, nor sought what was lost, but you have ruled them with might and hardness, hard, harshness. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd. They became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill, and my sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Our Messiah said he left the ninety-nine to go find the one. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I declares, the master Yahweh, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field, from not having a shepherd, and my shepherds did not search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus said the master Yahweh, See, I am against the shepherds, and shall require my flock at their hand, and shall make them cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. And I shall deliver my flock from their mouths, and they shall no longer be food for them. For thus said the Master Yahweh, See, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so I shall seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they have been scattered in the day of a cloud and of thick darkness. And I shall bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the lands and shall bring them into their own land. And I shall feed them on the mountains of Israel. What comes out from the mountains of Israel? The law and the word from Jerusalem. And I shall feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and on all the dwellings of the land. In good pasture I shall feed them. And their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. They shall lie there in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I shall feed my flock and make them lie down, declares the Master Yahweh. I shall seek out the lost and bring back the strayed. And I shall bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But the fat and the strong I shall destroy. I shall feed them with right ruling. I shall feed them with my Torah. And as for you, O my flock, thus said the Master Yahweh, See, I am judging between the sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Now, Messiah said something similar to that. We're going to go there in a minute. He is judging between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Um, flip over to verse 22, same chapter. Therefore I shall save my flock and let them no longer be a prey and I shall judge between sheep and sheep and I shall raise up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd and I, Yahweh, shall be their Elohim and my servant David a prince in their midst. I, Yahweh, have spoken and I shall make a covenant of peace with them and make evil beasts cease from the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the forest. Now, 
Let's see what the Messiah had to say about this. John chapter 10. Starting in verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up by another way, that one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Yahweh used, Yahshua used this figure of speech, but they did not know what he had been saying to them. Yahshua therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might possess life and that they might Possess it beyond measure. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But the hireling and not being a shepherd, one who does, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. Now the hireling flees because he is a hireling and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Even as the Father knows me, I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have which are not of this fold, I have to bring them as well and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Uh, Matthew chapter 25. It, it almost seems like the Messiah was speaking right out of the Torah, the Tanakh, when he was uh, Jeremiah talking about the pastors who led the sheep astray, uh, Ezekiel talking about the scattered sheep, and uh, he said that he would put one shepherd over them. Well, the Messiah said, I am that shepherd. Um, Matthew 25. I'm talking and not flipping. One second. Matthew 25, starting in verse 31. And when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy messengers with Him, then he shall sit on the throne of his glory. He is returning with his angels, and he will sit on the throne. And all nations shall be gathered before him, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. We just read in the Old Testament prophecies that he would judge between sheep and goats. Sheep and sheep. Goats and goats, rams and rams. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the sovereign shall say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the end result in verse 46, These shall go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. Now, those people wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The destination where Yahweh was trying to bring those people was the land of rest. And what did he promise them? Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 9. 
Because you have not yet entered the rest and the inheritance which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you, but you shall pass over the Jordan and shall dwell in the land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you to inherit, and he shall give you rest from all your enemies round about, and you shall dwell in safety. That's why I put those little notes on dwelling safely and being at rest, and that's what we're looking for today. We are waiting for the Messiah to return, to take us to the land, to give us rest from our enemies. What enemy? Revelations, chapter 20. This is when we're going to get a little taste of that rest. Revelations chapter 20 verse 1 And I saw a messenger coming down from the heaven having the key to the pit of the deep and a great chain in his hand and he seized the dragon the serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years and he threw him into the pit of the deep and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should not lead the nations no more astray until the thousand years were ended and after that he has to be released for a little while when that old serpent is bound for a thousand years we'll get a, a taste of that peace and when will permanent rest peace and safety come to pass verse 7 and when the thousand years have ended Satan shall be released from his prison and he shall go out to lead the nations astray which are in the four corners of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together for battle whose number is as the sand of the sea and they came up over the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the set apart ones in the beloved city and fire came down from Elohim out of the heaven and consumed them and the devil who led them astray was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are and they shall be tortured day and night forever and ever one day Satan will have no sway over humanity no power no authority it will be taken um, so the people were looking for a time when they would enter into the land of rest to be at peace from their enemies, a land flowing with milk and honey. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. And he talks about this rest. <coughs> Starting in verse 7. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 Therefore as the set apart spirit says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tried me proved me and saw my works 40 years therefore I was grieved with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, look out, brothers, lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief in falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness, deceivable, deceivableness of sin, for we have become partakers of Messiah if we hold fast the beginning of our trust firm to the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that we are unable to enter in because of unbelief. They were unable to enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 4. Therefore, 
since a promise remains of entering into his rest. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the good news was brought to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not having been mixed with belief in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into that rest. As he has said, as I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, and yet his works have come into being from the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has said thus about the seventh day. And Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this again, if they shall enter into my rest. Since then it remains for some to enter into it. And those who formerly received the good news did not enter in because of disobedience. He again defines a certain day. Today, saying through David, so much later, as it has been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. For the one, having entered into his rest, has himself himself also ceased from his works as Elohim rested from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disbelief. The Messiah said, Come all you who labor. And I'm not going to paraphrase the whole thing, but he said, I will give you rest. We have a rest right now in Messiah. But there is a future when all mankind can rest from the bondage and the slavery of sin. And let us all look forward to the day when our Messiah shall return, take us to the land, and give us rest. And we shall dwell there safely. Hallelujah.